This news update is brought to you by... Rock the remote with hours of free karaoke on video on demand from Flo. So bring it like Bay. There's even wonderful kids sing-alongs too, available anytime. Simply press the VOD button on your Flo remote. This is how we do TV. This is how we flow. It's Tuesday, February the 16th, 2016, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. In our top story, a new immigration control system announced yesterday has received the backing of the Royal Barbados Police Force, with a senior officer describing it as long overdue. The Immigration Department announced that effective April the 1st this year, everyone entering or leaving the island through the ports of entry would be fingerprinted. The decision was announced via a brief release from the Barbados Government Information Service in which the Chief Immigration Officer Erin Griffith was quoted as saying the introduction of fingerprinting would be followed later this year by facial scanning of passengers. The only exemptions to these regulations would be holders of diplomatic passports and children under the age of 16. It quoted Griffith as saying that these security measures brought Barbados in line with international ports of entry and were mandatory under the Immigration Biometrics Regulation 2015. In supporting the measure, Acting Assistant Commissioner of Crime, Lybron Sobers, told Barbados today it was long in coming and would strengthen the hand of the force in its fight against crime. They would um, have to ID, ID, ID people. They keep records of people that are coming and going, you know, not only fingerprint, but facial too, although, although um, fingerprint is the best method of ID. That is something that we, that we, that we should be doing ever since. Do you, do you think this, is, this will help with the gun issue? The gun? Yeah, and coming into Barbados, the guns that... Well, not specific gun. Mm -hmm. it, it, it will help deal with crime. But not specific gun, I'm not saying it. I don't, I don't even think that they should, if they're doing it, would want to be doing it for guns. To be doing it for crime, and people are traveling. Mm -hmm. Cr uh, criminals moving from one country to the other. I think, that's, I think that would be the main thing. Yesterday, Attorney General Adriel Braffitt defended the decision telling Barbados today in a terse comment that the new security measure showed that Barbados was simply following in the footsteps of other countries that had implemented similar measures. However, the new system has received the thumbs down from businessman and frequent flyer Robert Pitcher, who is hoping that it is nothing but an all fools day joke. Pitcher contended that it would only add to the existing problem at the airport and would discourage visitors. He also described the measure as foolishness and stupidness. A public war of words has erupted between acclaimed Barbadian lawyer Sir Richard Cheltenham QC and Guyana's Attorney General Basil Williams over writing fees stemming from a commission of inquiry into the killing of noted Guyanese historian and political activist Dr. Walter Rodney on June 13, 1980. Rodney's death from a bomb blast was ruled accident or misadventure by a coroner in 1988. However, it had been widely believed he was assassinated. The government of Guyana announced in 2013 that it would launch a commission of inquiry which began in April 2014 with Sir Richard as chairman of the three-member panel. Signs of a row emerged last week when the Guyanese Attorney General told the media that the Commission's final report was left with his confidential secretary in what he called a disrespectful manner and not at the President's office as was expected, and the three commissioners left Guyana shortly afterwards. One publication quoted Williams as saying that Sir Richard and his team had left the government puzzled by requesting a writing fee for completing the report. However, Sir Richard has hit back, telling Barbados today in a press release that the terms and conditions for the inquiry, including the writing fee, were agreed with Williams' predecessor, Anil Nanlal, who at all times was acting on behalf of the president. The noted Queen's Council said while there was no signed contract, not uncommon, in commissions of inquiry, he was careful to put the agreed terms and conditions in writing and send them to Nanlal in a letter dated February the 10th, 2014. 
In sports now attacking Windward Island's opening batsman, Johnson Charles looks set to replace Darren Bravo in the West Indies 15-man squad for the ICC World 2020 tournament in India in March and April. Left-hander Bravo wrote to the selectors stating that he wanted to focus on test career and would instead represent Trinidad and Tobago Red Force in the current WICB Professional Cricket League First Class Championship, which has four rounds remaining. Charles, who has been having a lean time in the ongoing four-day tournament, has played in 23 T20 internationals, scoring 463 runs at an average of 21.04 with a strike rate of 114.32. His last T20 international was against Sri Lanka at Colombo last November the 11th. In addition to Bravo, off-spinner Sunil Narain and batsman Kyron Pollard have also withdrawn from the World Cup squad and have been replaced by a Barbadian pair of Ashley Nurse and Carlos Brathwaite. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today. News you can trust. Well, it may be the month of love, but it is also the month of AgriFest. It is here. AgriFest 2016 at Queen's Park on February 26th through 28th. For lighting the theme, Grow, Sell, Eat, Repeat. A humongous amount of attractions and activities for everybody. So don't dixie doodle your physiog. I, brother daddy, will be there, along with my sheep, Dolly, Dootsy, and Dan. So come, let me set the way the very best of agriculture in the Caribbean. Turning out to news from the region, hundreds of students from Catholic schools across Trinidad will take to the streets of the capital, Port of Spain, tomorrow morning to protest the crime wave plaguing that Twin Island Republic. This march, which followed an earlier protest, is however intended to be a silent procession of pupils who are very angry over rising violent crimes. The gathering is expected to be addressed by Roman Catholic Archbishop Joseph Harris. Two young men from Success Laventille Secondary School were among victims recently murdered. Stops are planned at Woodford Square, the Rosary Church and Memorial Park, where the procession will be dismissed. The Ghana Police Force Narcotics Branch has disposed of 500 million Ghana dollars worth of cocaine at sea. Mondale Smith of HGPTV was there. On the high seas of the Atlantic Ocean, today, police of the Narcotics Branch had the task of disposing of in excess of 600 kilos of cocaine. Cocaine seized at various ports of entry and exits in Guyana. The street value in excess of $500 million. The quantity of cocaine in solid and liquid form was an accumulation from various drug busts and interceptions, which represents cases that were concluded. Meanwhile, on the international scene, Australian police have seized $1 billion Australian dollars or U.S. $700 million worth of the drug ice from a shipment of silicon bra inserts and art supplies. According to authorities, the bus is one of the biggest in Australia's history and the largest seizure of liquid methamphetamine ever. We pick up the full story in this CNN report. 
Australian police say it is a major victory in its battle against illicit drugs. We are here to laud the joint operation that has resulted in the largest seizure of liquid methamphetamine in Australia's history. In total, 720 litres of the drug, commonly known as ICE. Some of it hidden inside thousands of bra inserts, which police say were imported from Hong Kong last December. Most of the ice was found concealed in boxes of art supplies kept at several storage facilities in Sydney. This has resulted in 3.6 million individual hits of ice being taken off our streets with a street value of $1.26 billion. That 700 million US dollars worth of ice. Experts say the drug has caused users to commit violent assaults, robberies and road deaths. That's news and sports. However, you can join us again this afternoon for more. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also, tune into Channel 101 on Flow TV and to Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.